Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. I've got a bit of a ill voice, which is why it's more deeper and sultry than usual. I should actually figure out how to figure out <laughs> how to train my voice to do this usually, because I think it comes off pretty well. Anyway, it's been a great series thus far. 12 o'clock location, we got Bug starting as the Midnight Blue Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we got Kiko starting as the Red Terran. The series is in Bug's favor, two to one, so it's do or die for Kiko. This is on Apocalypse. Is a best of five. And it's been a great series thus far, in my opinion. As far as other notes, I do want to give kind of a general shout out to Jayun. If you do not already follow Jayun on Twitch, I highly recommend you do so. He has been organizing NAPL for the recent period of time. Unfortunately, I kind of have sad news in that regard, which is NAPL is now on pause. Um, looks like there's just there. Part of it is is there are pockets of time where foreigners seem to have a lot of motivation, a lot of time to be able to dedicate towards it, but at the moment it looks like that is not the case, so NAPL for the short term is moving towards more of a as there's availability uh, sort of format, unfortunately, but it, part of it is is I think what it comes down to is is there's something that Jane wrote in the closing outpost of NAPL, which is, is it's a marathon, not a sprint, and the way it was being run at the moment was very, very sprint-like, and it creates great content in the short term, and that is something I want to highlight. I really appreciate all of the players and Jayun in particular doing a lot of the work for NAPL, but I do think that it's important. It's a good lesson that content production over time is a marathon, not a sprint. So, which is why I'm trying to mar I'm trying to marathon slow play and take breaks when I need to. Uh, as far as Hasu League and everything else, it really feels anyway. Hopefully everything continues on, but it is kind of sad on my part. Anyway, we got a one gate assimilator opener instead of being all depresso. One gate assimilator opener. Kiko going for Barracks into refinery rather than barracks into expansion here. It looks like Bug is going to scout bottom left-hand corner first. And Kiko looks like he's making his way to the north, so he's going to be able to get first scout on Bug. Cybernetic score in an interesting position. I'm not sure if that actually speeds up. It looks like it actually might speed up probe uh, transfer on that gas. I'll have to check that out. Actually, my, where my brain is is actually the four gate that was defended via the two gate a while ago, SOS Toss versus Raj. And I actually want to make sure that range wasn't upgraded. Anyway, I have a lot of side distractions going on mentally. Anyway, so Kiko getting first scout, able to see that it is in fact a first gate opener. We do have the defensive preventative zealot. A factory has been dropped. In the meantime, the probe making its way around. Now this doesn't, so we got one initial Marine the probe actually kind of going to... So it didn't go for the close position. Instead, look at this. Bug getting creative, wanting to close it out. So building a Zealot, building a Dragoon, and has a proxy pylon. And I'm wondering if Kiko is going to sense, okay, hey, no probe approached. So maybe we've got some sort of... And this is actually kind of a very creative play from Bug, I believe. Because the Zealot is going to ward those Marines back, particularly if we can get to this close ramp position. And it looks like, like the timing is perfect to do precisely that. So what the Zealot can do, let's see if Bug pulls that Zealot back, actually. Because the Zealot can dance on this high ground and provide a lot of information. Basically, get rid of a lot of information. It looks like the Zealot is, in fact, going to dive all the way in. So now it's three Marines versus Zealot. Sees the factory in that Vulture building. And we've got a proxy robotics facility. The Dragoon starting to work on that SCV. The SCV's got to be a little bit curious here. And this is definitely alarm bells on Kiko's part because only two pylons are out in the field. And when you don't see that third pylon as a Terran player, you have to your alarm bells have to go up. So right now we've got a factory being built. This Vulture should immediately be searching to the north, seeing that lack of that third pylon. Marines are spreading out. We do have a bunker in construction. But... Robotic facility already there. The Vulture starting to make its way to the natural expansion. It'll see a probe that is... This actually... Is there going to be a Nexus drop behind this? I'd be a little bit surprised to see a Nexus drop. Checking the third. We are seeing a Nexus drop. So we're seeing Proxy Robo, but a Nexus drop in between. That's an interesting play. So hiding a little bit of the tech, but kind of giving an indication of a very delayed one gate into Robo. And I... The thing is, is I don't think Kiko's going to skip defenses here, although going for more vultures rather than siege tanks, so this actually might play out, interestingly enough. Usually with the proxy robotics, doing this sort of play where you're getting that nexus in between doesn't really help. You don't gain a lot of the advantages of the proxy because the reaver is coming out. I guess you get a little bit of the advantage where you have like the time space, but oftentimes you'll have more units on the ground and you're just risking this sort of thing where maybe your Terran opponent starts exploring out and finds it. 
at which point this is exposed and very hard to defend. Speaking of exposed and hard to defend, the Vulture is cycling all the way around. We have the Dragoon out of position to engage that Vulture, and the Vulture might be able to peek into the natural expansion, maybe into the main. So mine, however, in between, er, Dragoon takes a big hit in the face. And there's still like an open pathway, so Bug playing this very dangerously and still has not dropped. Is this just going to be a walk forward with the Reaver? I would be shocked to see that if it was just a walk. It looks like, no, it's just going to be a walk. That's why we didn't see any additional tech. Crazy play. I did not, I didn't think about this. So the Reaver, so the Dragoon clearing some mines already and the Reaver just walking down and there's no siege tank for Kiko now. And so that bunker is going to get taken out and we have Dragoons pressing forward. So now that this is a crazy play. I don't think I've ever seen this. Marine dead. That's lifted off, and if if we can get a zealot, so the dragoon can path forward. There's that mine to the right. The dragoon's trying, or the the vulture's trying to create some pressure on that corner. But Kiko, because he skipped that at siege tank early, and went for more vultures, and didn't sweep into the natural expansion. Now all of a sudden, so there's a siege tank. The reaver exposed, pressing forward. Bug still getting a good amount of damage. All the marines are gone. Takes out the reaver. But do we have another reaver behind this? Oh. Dragoon getting wiped out by that siege tank, and this was still an empty natural expansion, so a lot of economic damage done. But I gotta say, Bug is definitely so, and we had a shuttle a little bit late behind this, but... Templar Archives going in between. We might see a Dark Templar drop. I think I, uh, kind of odd call. So the robotics, this is me, the robotics dropped here, by the way, not here on point. Which actually kind of potentially mitigated the losses. Now the Marines actually charging forward. I don't even know who to call in this, honestly, because Kiko is able to resaturate. This is just a bizarre game. Kiko able to resaturate. I think Kiko's going to end up way ahead, actually, at the end of this. Not my best commentary. I'm going to chalk this up to being a little bit ill here. But effectively, so the robotics, ra rather than being dropped on spot, dropped here in the corner, which is great because it still was information denial. It was delayed. There was some delay because of that Nexus drop, but that did cloak some things. The Walking Weaver was a clever play. But now, the observatory, the robotics, the pylon, the observatory taken out because Bug didn't really micro a lot of those troops very well. If he had some zealots, maybe, but this isn't over. He's got some Dark Templar making his way in. Kiko does have some turrets being built, so l let's not call it just yet. Not a lot of turret coverage, though. We got a turret here. We don't have a turret at the natural, and we do not have a turret critically in the main. And if these Dark Templar drop before that shuttle dies... They can create all sorts of havoc. So more economic damage. So Kiko up on workers here. And up on supply. But now his main getting absolutely shattered by Dark Templar. Ugh, it gets a... Whoa, no, never mind. Brilliant scoop up to protect the Dark Templar from... From those mines. And we have no other latent detection. Those turrets... So two turrets attempting to get built on site. We do have a turret to the north but not quite in range to protect that southern turret being constructed. One Dark Templar has been wiped out, more turrets being built. And with this, Bug has definitely economically evened things up. That I was looking for a mind drag into those SCV, that didn't happen. Dark Templar still in the midst of this, finally gets cleared out. Another turret cancellation, so Bug playing the chaos game, but at the same time he's donating a lot of health and troops by walking headline, uh, headlong into mines here. So Kiko actually even in supply, which usually puts Terran in a pretty good situation. So he's even in workers, even in supply. So despite all that harassment, he's I think in an okay position here. And he's got a good amount of siege tanks. Yeah, there weren't a lot of siege tanks that were taken out in the midst of that. He lost a lot of Marines to the Reaver and whatnot, but this is also where Bug had to rebuild tech. So, and here's the thing with all of the, the Dark Templar loss, that what we got six Dragoons to try to defend this third, so the third is spotted. Kiko can just honestly, I think go plus one weapons, drop a couple additional factories. Certain, currently sitting on three factories, which suggests we're gonna actually move towards a third base of plus one weapons. But if we saw two additional factories dropped right now from Kiko, I think he could sweep the game pretty easily just because I don't know that Bug has a lot of, I guess it kind of goes both ways. Bug doesn't have a lot to defend right here. He doesn't have any Reavers. I don't see any Dark Templar on the field. He's sitting on five factories right this second. He is getting that third up ahead.
but it looks like Kiko instead is just content to move some troops uh, forward, relay some mines out in the field, and, and recognizing, okay, Bug donated a lot of troops to me. Let me just go ahead and grab my third now. But in response to this, Bug grabbing a fourth. And those six Dragoons that... Basically, it's just those same six Dragoons that have been here this entire time moving up to defend it against a single Vulture. So Kiko, maybe with a slightly larger Vulture active force with a, a bit of split action. Okay, now he's moving out. Plus one weapons right there. Might be able to wipe that out. Yeah, Bug was playing very greedy here. A Vulture checking that third, drawing the six Dragoons to that location. We have an Observer kind of moving out. It's going to see that base, but honestly, even if Bug moves to try to engage that base, yeah, this is bad news, honestly, I think, for Bug. We've got Siege Tank, Siege Tech, plus one weapons, and these Dragoons look like... So they got a couple Vulture kills right there. At least that's buying time for Kiko. But Kiko now, with... This foothold can just send some vultures to wipe out that 9 o'clock base. And the Dragoons just have to sit there and watch. Yeah, they're getting absolutely splatted. And it looks like Bug might get contained to potentially three bases, but honestly might be at threat of losing that third. Because again, this is just not a lot of Dragoons compared to the reinforcement siege lines of Kiko. And I think Kiko, recognizing it, has that third base up, is getting the Comsat station up. I, I gotta say, very... Solid discipline in the face of a lot of chaos in the early game. Now those vultures peeling off to start attacking that. The Dragoons in a bit of a panic trying to push down. But yeah, just going to press into them. Is that Observer going to get picked off as well? So great play from Kiko. Right now, Bug has an overproduction of... Not an overproduction. That's actually decent saturation for three bases, which is where he's at. So has a slight economic lead. But Kiko just has an absolute stranglehold, I think, as far as positioning. Zealot Leg Speed is going to come online, and that might be able to equalize things, like a, a good control group of Zealots might be able to press through and make something happen, but Bug moving now, and I don't think this was the timing. He does have a shuttle to maybe get some drops. He needs a miracle. Oh, I was about to say he needs a miracle mind drag and might have gotten it there, although it doesn't look like it's enough. Took out a couple siege tanks, but yeah, just not enough. It was a, actually a pretty decent attack right there, but still not solid enough to breach the control that Kiko has over the high ground. Kiko's still mm, grouping these siege tanks up in a nice pocket where a, one mine could shift the tide here. And once that leg speed kicks in here in a second, that could be a big factor. Kiko staging several of those vultures to the north. In the meantime, I want to check a, take a look. We do have some more factories that have peeled in. Bug again going with the skeleton crew forward. He's got two zealots in this, and this there are mines to drag. Dragoon's getting... Wiped out and pushed back. That Nexus at the 9 o'clock certainly going... I think certainly going to get wiped out. We got four Zealots with out leg speed. And this is a pile of Siege Tanks. Easily... So they're not going to splash damage each other. So one mine wiped out. All oh, the mine goes into the Dragoons to the north. And it looks like the Zealots are going to be able to sneak out. However, still not enough. One Siege Tank down. Honestly, a bit of a... I'm going to say bullet, and not instead of a bullet dodge, that was a mine dodge. Five additional Dragoons trying to peel their way forward. But the thing is, is they're getting matched by siege tank numbers in siege position as soon as they're on the forward front. So another base taken out. Kiko saying, you know what? I got you sealed in. I know I have an economic lead. I know I've got a troop, uh, about even troop count. <laughs> he went drop in the meantime. That was a bit greedy. Um... But I think, honestly, it might play out because he's gone drop and additional expansion. More Dragoons starting to flood out now. This might be enough, actually, given the uh, number of Siege Tanks here. Might be close, actually. We got three Dragoons, and they're kind of split. So we got a Dragoon underneath, but more reinforcements making their way up. Those aren't Siege Tanks. And unfortunately, yeah, I think going for that dropship was a little bit too greedy with on top of an expansion. If Kiko just... Well, never mind. Kiko holds. Barely. But we got another, honestly, I think the second wave of Dragoon is going to be enough to go at least peel out the high ground. It looks like that got wiped out. Where did the dropship go? Kind of curious where the dropship uh, migrated to. Dropship at the third, able to get on top of the workers right there. And it looks like the Dragoon's just going to ignore trying to clear that. So evacuating that, going to just try to attack that third, which is exposed. Mine's desperately getting planted here by Kiko to try to clear it up. This is some crazy gameplay, both directions. Some emergency Dark Templar being built as well. The Dragoon's running immediately into a, a tank that is sieged, a turret, a Dragoon, and some vultures. 
But the Dark Templar able to field forward and now finally clear that high ground. Well, maybe. Nope, not quite. So there's that. We got an absolute thread of control for Kiko up on that high ground. And Dark Templar able to get some damage done, but not able to breach that three o'clock. So Kiko's still running at three bases, soon to be running at four. That puts him ahead because this base has been emptied. The Dragoon's continuing to peel forward. Actually, a big bank for Bug. Like the alliteration there. The big bank for Bug to be able to clear this out. But it looks like Kiko is going to end up finally losing that high ground. And now he's got some trouble here because he's got this base that he's hope that is hidden to that corner. But that needs to be defended. He's low on siege tanks. He doesn't have a third machine shop down as of yet. He's got a good amount of factories behind this. But he's got some Dark Templar and Dragoons careening forward. These tanks are not yet sieged. Yeah, I think it was a little bit overambitious to maybe uh, to go for that. I mean, it paid off the dropship play, so let's not say anything yet. And again, Dragoon's getting donated by Bug. The, oh, the Observer Discipline has not been great. He's been just walking units into these minefields, hoping for the best, and it has not worked out for him. Some mines to try to hold the south. We have some Zealots marching in to try to clear up that 9 o'clock to go for a re-grab there. So Kiko... Still in a, has a supply lead, has plus two weapons, which is fantastic. Is about to have plus three, plus one. Uh, Bug's still alive, but in a rough spot, honestly. I think as soon as that third machine shop drops for Geeko and he's able to reestablish the siege tank count, right now just sitting at, uh, looks like four, also has a science vessel with some EMP. Really looking for that third machine shop, actually, to keep that siege tank count healthy. Uh, if he can run that out, or maybe even get some mines on the field. Because here's the thing, even with the mines, Bug has not done a great job at all with the observers and the mine uh, dodging right here. It looks like some vultures are going to get cleared out. They're going to flee to the south. Zealots just, yeah, it looks like the it's Minesweeper with the Zealots, effectively. When in, you know, when in doubt. Oh, another drop at the 9 o'clock. Behind the pylon wall. So great play right there. So the pylon wall actually working against Bug in this instance. And the mine's still there. And Bug, yeah, I, I think a little bit scattered here, looking for some place to get value, some place to get back into this. It looks like the Zelts are potentially going to be able to dr counter drop at the 9 o'clock location to clean up the siege tank. So, actually, not a lot of it. So, one pylon down and some health dropped off that Nexus and a bit of distraction. So, pretty nice recovery there from Bug. The Vulture actually able to micro against these Zelts, forcing the rest of this army back. So Bug might be able to get this additional base back up, but still the upgrade advantage massively in Kiko's favor. The economic advantage in Kiko's favor, he's got this base uh, pretty well saturated, sitting at 66 workers. The Vulture sweeping and seeing all of the workers transferring to that location. There's still that dropship, which is a threat running around. And now that siege tank count has, well, it's gotten, we're back up to eight, but they're gonna be plus three weapon siege tanks in just a moment, which is very, very abusive. And part of the thing is, usually as a Protoss player, you want to start getting to recall and things like that, stasis, whatnot. It is just High Templar and dropships right now for Bug. He does have a Stargate up, but hasn't been able to produce anything. His main is out, so he's two, three. He's at three bases. It's, so it's three bases versus three bases. He's down economically, down 20 supply. And Kiko's now starting to move out on the map, and he's got some science vessels and some EMP to work with. Not a lot of observers out in the field, and that one was taken out. Big EMP hits a good amount of the forward units there. And this is, again, with a massive upgrade deficiency. Only plus one weapons out here for Bug. And he's massively down on supply. And this is true supply. This is even worker count. So if Kiko has a unified army at the forward point, basically Bug needs to have some miraculous engagement. Psystorm can equalize things. Moltrap loves saying that Sidestorm is a great equalizer, and he's not wrong in that. Observer gets picked off to the northern front, and now just a massive amount of siege tanks moving in, but bug finding tanks on siege, defense matrix on the front, some zealots sweeping the front. Three high templar get picked out of there. It looks like a decent size storm to the north, and this just might be too many vultures, and that will clean it up. I'm wondering if this is going to be the GG point. A lot of the siege tanks have been wiped out, but this is still a mat. Yeah, that's GG. Still a massive standing army there from Kiko. Well played from Kiko, top to bottom. I gotta say, interesting play from Bug. 
at the front front part and it just made a kind of a fun chaotic match i like these silo matches honestly i think they're kind of fun hope you guys enjoyed it we'll move on to a final decider match now to see who advances to the round four hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening <laughs>